In November of 2023, the Swell Pod took a 10 day journey across five states, traveling 3,580 miles with one challenge in mind. And that challenge was to interview 100 pleasantly rebellious humans to uncover deep truths about what it takes to create something that has never existed before, challenge the status quo, maybe even change the world. This is the Kiln Road Trip created and produced by The Swell Pod. In partnership with Kiln, Motera Camper Vans, and sponsored by Chorus. I'm Spencer McEwen. And I'm Josh Taylor. And together we're the co-hosts of The Swell Pod and your guides on the Kiln Road Trip. Follow along on the journey. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Follow The Swell Pod on social media and subscribe to your YouTube channel at, you guessed it, The Swell Pod. This is interview 94 of the Kiln Road Trip, and today we're at Kiln Lucadia in California talking with Matt Villalobos. Matt is the founder and CEO of Grandview Foundation. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We hope you enjoy. So Matt Villalobos, thank you so yeah. much for being on the Swell Pod uh, and the Kiln Road Trip, yeah. uh, where we're on a journey to interview 100 pleasantly rebellious people. <laughs> um, and you're one of the 100. We appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you can, just for our audience, can you uh, introduce yourself and tell everybody what you do? Awesome. Yeah. My name is Matt and I'm the CEO of Grandview Communities. So we build home together. So we're building luxury houses across the Western United States, California, Pacific Northwest, and the Mountain West. And I came from private equity. So I ran a real estate fund for the last 15 years and I retired in May. That's incredible. And yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to, because I mean, we, we kind of just saw each other in passing all day long here in, uh, in, in the kiln, Lucadia. Uh, you also mentioned that you're also, so you kind of juggle between uh, Lucadia or Encinitas and, and Park City, yep. right? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so what kind of got you into uh, the, work that you, the work that you were doing? Is, is it something that you just kind of fell into or you were really passionate about it? Yeah, yeah so I uh, went to an academy high school. So I played water polo and swam mm. and did all four years of high school in one year. And then the other three years got a bachelor's in architecture and engineering. Mm. Thought I was going to be an architect designing homes um, and graduated in the Great Recession. Mm. So worked for a public home builder and we kind of grew and restructured the company and a hedge fund kind of followed me and saw what I did and restructured the company. We never gave any property or houses back to the bank and saved the company. And at the end of it, the family didn't want to be involved. Mm. So I uh, got hired to be running this equity fund and we were mostly master planned communities. So mm. we, um, Owned 30, 40,000 lots across the United States, selling and developing lots to public home builders. And then over the years, built and sold a few uh, home builders and took them public. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, over the time that you were doing that, is there any, like, what, what were some of like the, what were some of the bigger challenges that you faced building the business up that you were building? Yeah, I mean, mostly government and kind of opposition. Uh, mm. Most people view more houses as bad. Mm. Um, the reality is more houses makes housing affordable. Yeah. So, um, and it's all about the quality of houses. I think everyone thinks of housing as apartments or entry level housing. So they think more of that is bad, which it probably mm. is. Versus if you'd build a place that people actually want to live, raise their families, build community, you can actually change cities and communities and eventually states. Mm. And that's what excites me most about what we're doing now. Mm. Uh, we bought a project in Las Vegas called Lake Las Vegas. It was a bankrupt community, trees growing in the golf course, and it was a ghost town. And now it's a vibrant place with over 10,000 residents. Mm water sport activities, three successful golf courses and hotels, and mm. people want to live there. You're reviving like a whole, a whole area, a whole area. That's incredible. Yeah. So how long does a project like that take from inception to where people it, are? It can take, I did a project in Sacramento that started in 1990 mm -hmm. and we just sold our final house in 2021. No way. So, I mean, a, wow. a project could take 30 years. Yeah. I have a project in Riverside that started in 1989 and we just delivered our 300th house mm. and there's another 4,200 to go. It's pretty rewarding. I would imagine, right? Like 
seeing these communities go from what they were before to, you know, like you mentioned, a thriving place. Mm. I think that's incredible. Who had that vision then? Was that so back then you got introduced to it by who? Um, the concept of that community. <clears throat> of communities, yeah. Yeah. So I um after graduating high school slash college, I went down to Point Loma mm. in San Diego to go to college. Mm. And the business school kind of talked about the triple bottom line. Of, mm. It's not just about making money. It's how do you can build communities? Mm. So I did my thesis on walkable communities, uh, how to design communities where people flourish and actually enjoy living there. Mm. Neighbors can live there and multi-ethnic, multi-socioeconomic. And how do you put it all together? Most people do housing wrong. They mm. put affordable on the outskirts, big right. houses together, segregate versus if you could put yeah. it all together, people live together. That's one of my favorite things of living in Park City. It is an affluent area, no doubt, but it's also a resort town. So people mm. who live there work there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people and friends that live in the community are bartenders, servers, lifties, mm -hmm. and we all live together. And because every house is are integrated together, mm -hmm. a small 600 square foot condo is down the street from a $10 million house. Yeah. So... That's, that's kind of the vision of kind of doing mm. that and building communities like that. Mm. And it's why I had a great career and working for Wall Street was fun. Um, you know, it's like playing for the Yankees yeah. and you're a starting pitcher for the last 10 years. <laughs> right. It's fun. But at some point, making money and doing big things isn't as rewarding Yeah. versus now actually getting to do what, like going back to the roots mm. of how do we build places that people want to live? So is this, so is this, so you're working with it, are you doing some nonprofit work, right? I am. Yeah. yeah. So we have the Grandview Foundation. Grandview Foundation. So tell me about that. So Grandview Foundation is supporting sometimes existing organizations or just special projects to create home aligned perfectly of we're building home together at Grandview Communities. The Grandview Foundation takes 50% of my profits directly back into the foundation to give away. Mm. And I would give a hundred percent if taxes allowed me to, yeah. but um, mm. there's really cool projects in Park City. There's a, a project called Bridge 21 and it's for adult special needs um, friends really. And creating a community for them to live with like-minded people and actually flourish. And how can they work and live together Oftentimes as adult children, they don't flourish living with their parents. And in Park City, especially, it's not necessarily a, a money issue. It's more of a, if you are loved and cared for and seen and known, mm -hmm. you actually do better. So um, that organization's working on building a few houses to house those people mm -hmm. um, and really excited to support that. And so the foundation in that instance will uh, build maybe two houses, maybe three, as it grows for those community members. Um, in Encinitas, we're building a project, 12 houses, and we're the foundation's buying the affordable unit from the city, and we're gifting that to an impact leader in the community. Um, up in Vista, we're building 21 townhomes, and probably two to three of them, the foundation will buy and either give to people rent-free or gift to them as well. Wow. Where people are in the community doing either ministry or impactful work, and housing's the biggest trigger. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where where do people who actually want to give back live or afford to live? Yeah. So did this happen? So did you start doing this after you re you retired? You're like, I'm going to retire and now I'm going to go do this nonprofit. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, October of, uh, 21, I started my foundation mm. and kind of was getting frustrated of how can I give back? How can I create an impact? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, which isn't saying this is bad, but writing a check's all you can do. Yeah. And mm. you know, the more and more you serve on boards of organizations, you find kind of weak spots mm. of, hey, this organization's doing something amazing, but for tax reasons or organizational reasons, there's we can't do something. There's a homeless ministry in San Diego where there's a significant amount of high school students that don't have homes mm. and they don't show up to school because they don't want to leave their belongings. Right. And there's this awesome person that goes around and picks them up and takes them to the 24 hour fitness showers, mm -hmm. stores their stuff, takes them to school. And she didn't have a car. Oh. Her car broke down. And the organization she works for, for IRS reasons, wouldn't allow me to give them a car 
And there's a friend that lives up here that owns a car dealer. And he's like, hey, it's new Suburban. I'll sell it to you for $40,000. i will pay for half. You pay for half. And the organization wouldn't let us do that. What? So the foundation, what excites me the most as it has evolved is how do we come along great organizations and solve a need where we can go and the foundation can go buy that car yeah. and then gift it to her personally so that organization doesn't have to deal with the paperwork. Yeah. What, so yeah, where, I know we talked about community, but where does that come from for you? Mm. Um, help me understand like this. I mean, just knowing these stories and, and feeling compelled to, to take action to, to help an individual even yeah. like, within the community, not just, not, not, you know, a, a large community, but also just that individual, where does that come from? Yeah. Um, a lot of people ask me that. I think it comes from me personally. I've, uh, grown up in a great family and had a ton of resources and oftentimes, you know, seeing people without those same resources mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm no different than them. Mm -hmm. I've, my parents worked really hard. They came from Mexico and, you know, built a big business and it's in healthcare and that's exciting. Yeah. Um, but it was never about the money. And then I got to go to great Academy high school, great college. And I then was in the right place at the right time and did really well, but I, I personally believe that we're all blessed with resources and they're not ours. So mm. to kind of freely give it all away. Mm. And for me, to your point of community, I think, mm. I think the, it's a cool, that's where you can create the most impact. Mm. It's amazing. When, when, when did that start? When did you have that feeling? Was that as a child or a teenager? No. Was it, what point, what, what was the earliest point you remember? I need to do something here. I feel like I need to yeah, do something. Yeah, I was probably 25 and I'd made my first million dollars after taxes mm. and I wasn't happy. I had a ton mm. of money, mm. the nicest cars, nicest houses. And it kind of was a, how do I create an impact? Why do I want to keep doing this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, working for a big company, you're, you know, every year you're trying to give more and more money back and return investors, which is all great. And I think there's a, a role in that in the system. But if you're not doing it to give back, why do it? Mm -hmm. So I honestly felt stuck mm -hmm. of what can I do with what I have? Yeah. And so... If I can, so you work out of so Kiln uh, Lucadia, mm -hmm. uh, but also Kiln Park City as yeah. well, right? So yep. Can you tell? Also us? Kiln Meridian. Kiln Meridian too. Yeah. So you know that team. What? Yeah. That's a great team too. It's a we, great we, team. Yeah. It's fantastic. So tell me about um, why Kiln. If you can. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of similar. Of you know, I bought a house in Park City in 2017 big house, did all the big things and kind of the, I, I think our world's lonely right now. Mm. So I think, you know, having big things and being isolated behind gates is great for some people, but also kind of sucks and it's yeah. not a good quality of life. Mm. And so I, uh, ended up buying a ski and ski out condo in park city and it, it was the best and worst decision of my life <laughs> flooded three times. So that was no. terrible. But in those floods, I met all these friends. Yeah. So some of my best friends to this day are people that were all affected by the flood. I actually remember this. Like there was a big flood, right? Up in Park City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of people that were yeah. affected by that. Yeah. And so, you know, going through the rebuilding process and dealing that with people um, was awesome. And in that process, I ended up getting a ranch, which is now the foundation is going to build. And it's going to be a retreat center where mm. 50 people can sleep, do a, executive leadership, nonprofit boards, and gathering, um, it's on the river. So it's an awesome legacy property. Yeah. But in that process, I was like, I need a place to live. So I bought a condo right in new park and uh, kiln opened up like a month after I bought that condo. Hmm. So I was like, Oh, this is awesome. Like I'm used to being in a big space with a big office. And now I'm in this little condo, hmm. I can walk to work. So, um, and likewise in kiln Lucadia, I live probably two blocks away and, I can, I often drive, but I can walk or skateboard just yeah. down to the office and, uh, get to meet people and talk to people. And it's really cool. Like when you're in community, you can bounce ideas just like how we ran in together today. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. And you know, obviously like we could probably talk forever. This is a, like a 
It's supposed to be like a 15-minute interview. Yeah, we should do interview. a follow-up. I'd like to it's very go interesting. to the community another time. The community yeah. side is very interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is the beauty of, of, of I think, Kiln is the collisions, is, is the opportunity to meet new people, chat, um, learn from each other, things like that. And yeah. uh, we do ask one last question to everybody that, that comes on the podcast. Yeah. And that is, what does it take to create something that has never existed before? Before we get into the rest of the episode, we want to thank the partners and sponsors who made the Kiln Road Trip possible. The Kiln Road Trip is brought to you by Kiln. Kiln is a boutique co-working and flex office community with 13 locations in six states across the West, dedicated to providing innovative workspaces that empower your team to thrive. Whether you're a solo visionary or an enterprise level team of up to 100, Kiln transcends being merely a place to work. It's a hub for learning and connecting with like-minded professionals that will make you and your team love where you work. And if you haven't stepped foot inside a Kiln yet, you really need to. On this road trip, we visited every single Single location and trust us when we say once you see these beautifully designed spaces meet the talented team and connect with fellow members you won't want to work anywhere else locations include utah colorado idaho oregon california and arizona and they're growing too with multiple locations set to open in 2024 yeah so be sure to check out the kiln locations nearest you by booking a tour at kiln.com and answer swell in the question how did you hear about us once you complete the tour you'll be entered into a competition where you could win a one-year membership, their club membership at Kiln. Yep, you heard that. That's kiln.com, book a tour, and be sure to mention Swell in the question, how did you hear about us? The Kiln Road Trip is also brought to you by Motera Campervans, a luxury campervan rental company for iconic road trips. Their top of the line vans are available at seven locations located near America's best outdoor adventure destinations. They have consistently earned the highest customer ratings in the industry, making Motera camper vans your gateway to adventure without sacrificing on comfort or service. That's true, and initially we wanted to take this journey in a 1960s VW bus, but thankfully we found Motera instead. With three van options, we took the Pop Top Classic, which sleeps four and is best for those who want to maximize floor space and, and storage. This was critical for us because it needed to sleep the entire crew, we needed space to edit, and we were traveling with large amounts of equipment, luggage, and you know other goodies that we picked up along the way. And this van took us through all 3,580 miles of the trip. Super comfortable and sweet to drive. And actually, Motera offers fully planned itineraries if you'd rather leave the planning to someone else. Visit gomotera.com forward slash swell. That's gomotera.com forward slash swell. This episode is also brought to you by Taurus. Taurus is leading the charge in home energy storage. Taurus makes it easy to achieve energy independence and a greener tomorrow. The Taurus station provides everything you need to generate clean power, efficiently store electricity, and easily manage your energy use. And installing a Taurus station offers plenty of benefits, including save money on your electricity bill, also ensure energy security with backup power during outages, reduce carbon emissions with renewables. You can also automate EV charging and HVAC systems with 100% renewables. And enjoy unrivaled system monitoring and support. If you like the sound of those benefits, get a quote to build your Taurus station in less than 30 seconds. Super easy at Taurus.co. That's T-O-R-U-S dot co. Now, let's get back to the episode. That's a great question. Uh, in my experience, it's not following the rules going outside of the lines, boundaries, pushing the limits, and really questioning why not do something better? Hmm. Why stay in the stagnant of what, how everyone's done it before? And it's usually one quarter turn difference. It's hmm. not reinventing the wheel. I love it. That is technically pleasantly rebellious. It so is. That's what we're all about. And I think that's a fantastic answer. Sorry well, about I, to say uh, No, I, I, never <laughs> fin- I, never fi- I never finish it on the right... <laughs> Give me an example, like the like what comes yeah. to your mind, like either when you first started to realize that's what you need to do, or maybe it's something this this week. I don't yeah. know, something simple. Yeah, I, I think you know, in business school they teach you financials, and you're going to be an analyst, and you're going to work at Goldman, and you're eventually going to be a VP, and then one day you'll become a partner. It's very linear, yes, and it's very hierarchy and pedigree and where did you go to school? And I followed a very untraditional path. I went to a private Christian school 
I worked for a home builder. I then, based on my experience, got hired mm. and had honestly a lot of freedom to go do stuff. Mm. And I didn't ask if I could go do it. I just did it. Mm. And I proved myself. And once you have that experience and uh, profit record, people listen and trust you. And you get invited to bigger meetings. And all of a sudden, you're buying a company or you're selling a company or... Uh, you know, doing some arbitrage play and, yeah. you know, and then, then, you know, most people say you should go stay in that company or go to another company. I kind of started doing things on the side. I was like, I can still go do my job really well, but I'm bored mm. doing my job, which people confuse boredom with mm. not being busy. I was super busy. I was just not satisfied with what I was doing. Mm. Yeah. So on the side, I've personally built 21 custom houses for myself. Mm -hmm always said I was going to live in them. And what's really cool when you speak of community, every house I've sold, I'm still friends with those people that bought them. Mm. And those people haven't left those houses. They still own them, live them, mm. are raising their family. And it's one of the coolest things, which is what we're really excited about Grandview is now we can go do that on scale mm. and maybe one day go sell that to another builder. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of The Kiln Road Trip. Be sure to follow along on the rest of the journey, and you can do that in two ways. One, subscribe to the podcast, whether you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or maybe even watching on YouTube, and follow along on all of our social media platforms, whether you're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok, at The Swell Pod. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next episode.